oh, 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 I like you. Nobody else can shine the way you do. In this great big world, nothing could be more true than the way I feel. I like you. When you're happy, when you're sad, when you're feeling anxious or super duper mad, if you feel a little crazy, that's okay. Let me tell you a secret. We all feel that way. of games we can play with balloons too. That's true. Do you want to be in charge of games? Yeah. Hey you two, what are you doing? It sounds like you're planning something. Yep. Well, what are you planning? Can you keep it a secret, Miss Jill? Oh yeah, I can keep a secret. No, really, this is super duper top secret. So, we have to know that we can fully trust you to keep it quiet. Yeah, we don't want the word to get getting to a uh, you know who. Uh, no, I don't know who. Who and what are we talking about? It's a surprise birthday party for Jasper! Oh, wow, that's pretty exciting. I can definitely keep that a secret. When is his birthday? Tomorrow. Whoa, tomorrow? And is the party tomorrow too? Yep. And you're just planning it now? Uh-huh. I was talking to Jasper earlier today, and he seemed kind of sad because he couldn't have a birthday party with all of his friends because of COVID. Hmm. He could only invite Jasmine and I. So, Carson and I decided we would plan a surprise birthday party for him in our backyard and try to make it extra special. Aw, that's awesome. You two are the best. That's a great idea. How can I help? Well, we are just working on a list of things we need to do. So far, we have down that we need lots of balloons. And I'm going to plan some games. And we need food. Yes, definitely lots of food. <laughs> that sounds like a great start. Boys and girls, why don't you stand up and practice our New Testament Bible book song while I help Jasmine and Carson finish their list. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy. 
Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews, and James, and first Peter, second Peter, one, two, three, John, Jude, and Revelation, one, two, three, John, Jude, and Revelation. that our Bible story today has a party in it, too? It does? Is it a surprise birthday party? With cake and presents? No, it's not a birthday party. It's a wedding party. A wedding party? That doesn't sound like very much fun. Well, it is actually often called a wedding feast, and you know what that means. Food, food, lots of food! Wow, that doesn't sound very boring after all. <laughs> oh, Carson, it's not all about food. <laughs> That's right. Why don't we listen to Miss Sharon tell her story and we can learn all about it. Oh, I almost forgot. I asked Miss Sharon to distract Jasper while we planned his surprise party. So you're going to have to tell the Bible story, Miss Jo. Oh, Okay. But don't worry, Miss Sharon left her Bible out and showed me where we're going to be reading from today. Come on, it's inside! I'll just stay here and work on playing on the party games. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, let me just find the book of John here. Jasmine, do you remember where John is in the Bible? It's one of the Gospels. <laughs> one of the first four books of the New Testament that tell us all about Jesus. That's right. I'm so excited to hear about Jesus' first miracle. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is a miracle again? Well, it's actually pretty exciting. A miracle is something that happens that can't be explained using science, but can only be explained by God's power. Oh, but I thought science could explain everything. <laughs> science is really good at explaining how the physical world works, but there are lots of things that science can't explain or questions that science can't answer. Let's read our story now and you will see why science can't explain a miracle. In the days following his baptism, Jesus began to choose a group of men who would follow him and learn from him. He called them his disciples. Wait a minute, Miss Jo. How come Jesus only chose men? Doesn't he want women to follow him too? <laughs> it can be a little tricky for us to understand, but in Israel at the time when Jesus lived, women were treated a lot different than men. It was only men who would be called to follow a rabbi or teacher. What? So Jesus didn't 
didn't have any women following him? Well, no, actually he did. Jesus' 12 disciples were all men, but the way Jesus treated women was very different than how women were treated in Israel at that time. Jesus loved women just as much as men, and he wanted them to follow him too. Oh, good! <laughs> there were a lot of women who chose to follow Jesus, and as we learn more about Jesus, we will hear some stories about some of these special women. Okay! One day, Jesus took these men along with his mother with him to a marvelous wedding party. Everything was going well until the wine ran out right in the middle of the wedding party. Mary found out and came to tell Jesus about the problem. Jesus asked her, Why are you telling me this? It is not yet time for me to show myself. But Mary still hoped he would help and spoke quietly to the servants, telling them to do whatever Jesus told them. There were several huge water jars nearby. Jesus told the servants to fill them with water and then pour the water into jugs and take it to the head waiter to taste. Imagine how confused the servants must have been. Why should they take water to the head waiter? But they listened to Jesus and did what he said. When the head waiter tasted it, he exclaimed to the bridegroom, Most people serve the best wine at the start of a meal, but you have saved the best till last. For the jugs were now filled with delicious wine. This was the first of many miracles which Jesus would perform. The disciples who came with Jesus believed in him when they saw what he did. Jesus didn't perform this miracle just to help out at a wedding. He was showing that he was no ordinary man. Jesus was God, and the one who could help by providing drink for a wedding would later provide what we need the most, salvation for all who believe. When we trust in Jesus, our thirst is satisfied forever. Hmm, I'm confused. What do you mean that our thirst is satisfied forever? <laughs> well, what does it mean to be thirsty? It means I really, really, really need a drink of water. <laughs> That's right. And what will happen if you don't get a drink of water? I will not be happy, and I will get really tired, and, well, I guess eventually I would die if I didn't get water. That's right. Jesus says in the Gospel of John, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Just like our physical bodies need water, and without it we will be really thirsty and eventually even die. In the same way, our spirits are thirsty for Jesus. Jesus gives us life, and we need Jesus in our lives right now and forever. Let's stand up, boys and girls, and we'll sing a song about Jesus.
so far I have balloon toss and I have balloon pop. The one where you have to try to pop a balloon by sitting on it. Ooh, I like that game! <laughs> Me too. I was also thinking that maybe we could have a treasure hunt with clues hidden inside the balloons. But I think I might have to have a little help on that one. Ooh, I can help with that, Carson. I love making clues. It's so much fun. Thanks, Miss Jill. Jasmine, what are you working on there? Oh, I'm just working on our list of food. Good, we need... Lots of food! I know, Carson. <laughs> and you know, for once, I agree with you. <laughs> All right, so what do you have so far? Let's see. I have two cakes, ten bags of chips, five cucumbers, two bags of carrots, three boxes of cookies, and five cases of pop. Whoa! Um, how many people are coming to this party? Well, let's see. There's me, Carson, Jasper, and our parents. So that makes seven. Um, well, I'm not exactly an expert, but... That seems like a lot of food for seven people. Yeah, I'm never one to turn down food, but that seems like a lot, even to me. <laughs> well, after our story today, when they ran out of wine in the middle of a wedding, I figured I'd better be prepared. What? They ran out of food at a wedding feast? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, not the food, just the wine. But still, wouldn't that be terrible? Yeah. So what happened? Mary, that's Jesus' mother, said Jesus to make more wine. And how did he do that? Well, Jesus told the servants to fill these empty jars with water. And when they did, bam, it turned into wine. It was a miracle! That is something that can't be explained by science, but only by God. Only God could turn water into wine just like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. Yep, when Jesus starts doing miracles, which are things that only God can do, he is showing that he is God's son. I don't want to run out of anything at our party, so that's why I started making this list. I figure it never hurts to be prepared. And you know, when Carson starts eating, things can disappear pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, I don't think I could eat that much food. Oh, so you think maybe it's a bit too much? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. I think that one cake will be plenty for seven people. <laughs> I guess you're right. And I probably don't need ten bags of chips. Nine should be plenty. Jasmine! <laughs> oh, all right! Two bags of chips! That's better. I have to go do memory verse time with Miss Sharon, but maybe you could work on cutting down that list a little bit more while I'm gone. Okay! Miss Sharon, are you ready for memory verse time? Yep! <laughs> Hey, where's Jasper? I thought you were supposed to be distracting him from you know what. Oh, it's okay. He really wanted to help with kids' church and couldn't understand why he couldn't go in the backyard. So I just told him that I really needed help preparing the craft for in-person kids' church this Sunday. Ah, good idea, Miss Sharon. Pretty sneaky. Thanks. How's the party planning going? Well, it's been interesting, that's for sure, but I think we're almost done. That's good, because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to distract Jasper. <laughs> Once he finishes this job, he's going to be wanting in the backyard. <laughs> that's okay. I think we will be just about finished by then. So should we practice our memory verse? Yes. So far, we've learned this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. And last week, we talked about how Jesus said that he is the way and that no one comes to the Father except through me. So today, I guess we're going to talk about what Jesus means when he says he is the truth. That's right. This one sounds a little bit confusing. 
What do you mean? Well, I know what it means to tell the truth. And last week, Carson learned a very important lesson lesson about telling the truth and not telling lies. But I'm a bit confused about how Jesus. A person can be the truth. Ah, I see what you mean. It might help if we first talk about what truth is. So when you tell the truth, it means you tell something the way it is or the way it actually happened. Yes, and when Carson lied about his homework, he was not telling the truth because he didn't tell Pastor Harry what actually happened. He said that he had finished his homework when he hadn't. That's right. So when we tell the truth, then what we are saying has to match up with what actually happened. So for something to be true, it has to match up with reality, with the way things actually are in the real world. Hmm. I think maybe some examples might help me. That's a good idea. Hmm. Ah,、oh, I have one, Miss Sharon. Is it true that an elephant is gray? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Now, Miss Sharon, how do you know that I am telling you the truth when I say that an elephant is gray? Well, I've seen an elephant at the zoo a couple times, and I have seen lots of pictures of elephants, and they're always gray. Right. Now, how about if I told you that bears are pink? Am I telling the truth? Ah,、uh, no, Miss Jill, that is not right. Bears are not pink, but I have seen bears at the wildlife park, and they are black or brown, not pink. But polar bears might be white. Okay, yeah, that's right. Because for something to be true, it has to match up with reality, with the way things really are in the real world. And in the real world, there are gray elephants and brown bears, but not pink bears. <laughs> okay, so what does that have to do with Jesus? Well, when Jesus says, "I am the truth," he is saying that. I am what is real. If you want to know what is real, how things really are, and what is true, you have to follow me. You have to match your life up with mine. Jesus is the one who shows us how to really live our lives the way we were meant to live. Ah, so when we follow Jesus, we are living the truth. Yeah, that's right. Jesus shows us how to live the best way or the true way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Boys and girls, let's stand up and practice our memory verse now. And this is the testimony that God gave us: eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Yeah, this is the testimony that God gave us: eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Jesus said.
testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Yeah, this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. 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 Talking. Hmm. What have you been talking about? Oh, you know, not much. Yep, just talking about this and that. Kids Church. We've been talking about our Kids Church story. Yes, that's right. And how they ran out of wine at a wedding. And I don't want to run out of food at, um... At what, Jasmine? Oh, nothing. I can't tell you. It's a surprise. Yes, a good surprise. So don't ask Jasmine about it, or it won't be a surprise anymore. You know Jasmine isn't very good at keeping secrets. Okay. I guess I will just have to wait and see. Can I at least get a little hint, though? Nope. But you'll have to w wait until tomorrow to see what your surprise is. Okay. I guess I can wait until then. Now let's pray and get, say goodbye to all our fair friends. You ready? Three, two, one, pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that you show us the best way to live our lives. Thank you that you are a God that works miracles, like turning the water into wine. God, I pray that you would work a miracle in the hearts of each of the boys and girls watching today, that they would know how much they are loved by you. Amen. Bye. Bye. I like the pep in your step and the groove in your moves. I like the roll in your rock and the hip in your hop. I like the pep in your step and the groove in your moves. I like the roll in your rock and the hip in your hop. I like the pep in your step and the groove in your moves. I like the roll in your rock and the hip. Shine the way you do In this great big world Nothing could be more true Than the way I feel I like you I like you Nobody else can shine the way you do In this great big world